Those old kids' books you have laying around the house could be worth a small fortune. Today, we're going to look at the top 20 that are selling right this very minute. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at kids' books. There are tons of kids' books that can sell for some phenomenal money. They could be laying around your house in your basement in the attic right this very minute. So today we're going to delve into the top 20 most valuable kids' books. <laughs> Now there are tons of kids books that are worth a lot of money. Today we're just going to look at the ones that are more obvious to show up than other ones. Now this is the golden treasury of Caroline and her friends. Probst is the actual artist. He actually did the story itself. This one routinely sells for hundreds of dollars. Condition usually is everything, so if this book was in far better condition, it would have went for far more money. Now this is the Velveteen Rabbit, and an interesting fact on this one, though it is a first edition, it is a sixth printing, and it still went for hundreds of dollars. Now usually you'd expect only the first edition to sell for some good money, but that isn't always the case. Many editions can be almost as rare, and in some cases rarer than the first edition. That's why certain copies like this one here can still sell for hundreds of dollars. This is The Little Prince from 1943. Another interesting fact you need to be aware of is the dust jacket in many cases can be worth as much as the book, if not more. Even in damaged condition like this one here, which is missing a giant chunk, they can still sell for hundreds if not thousands of dollars if you have the right one. Now this is a wildly sought after one. This is The Cat Who Went to Heaven by Coatsworth. Now this one is damaged very severely and is missing a chunk off the spine, but it still went for hundreds of dollars. This is a first edition from 1930. There aren't many of these left. You may even have one sitting around and just assume because of the condition or the state that the book is in that it's not worth much money, but that isn't always the case. Now this is by Maurice Sendak. Now of course we all know The Wild Things, one of his more well-known ones, but this is a very specific one, one of his earliest pieces of work. So that's why this one is worth so much money. Most people just assume things like this won't carry the value, but the artist alone can be why it sells for so much. A large number of kids books could have first been pressed, first printed in other countries. This is Bambi. This is the first edition from Germany. This is the same one that Walt Disney turned into a classic animation movie. And this one went for nearly a thousand dollars. Now this is The Greatest Gift, and it's a Christmas tale by Philip Van Dorn Stern. This is a first edition. It's a hardbound with the dust jacket. Another thing to consider is sometimes a hardbound edition may not be the first edition. Most library editions are automatically hardbound, even if the original one was a paperback, or at least they were at one point because they needed to hold up to many people reading them. Now here's an interesting one. This is Charlie Yup and his Snip Snap Boys. Now a lot of these earlier titles may not have been published in mass quantity. So quantity published can sometimes dictate the value of them. Now here's another cute book here. This is Gerald McBoing Boing. This is a 1950s golden book. Golden book does have quite a few that can sell for hundreds of dollars. Condition, again, is everything with some of these. This is one of those you want to make sure it's in the best condition possible. Now, this is Lucille. It's an I Can Read book, and at the bottom of most I Can Read books, it will actually say in a ribbon, an I Can Read book. Now, the I Can Read book series has tons of titles. Crosby Bonzel is one of the more famous authors. There are tons of them, maybe even several hundred. There are people that just collect an I Can Read book, and there are some titles that are extremely scarce, especially towards the end of the run. Now, this is Millions of Cats. This is an early one from 1928. It has the dust jacket. Everyone wants the dust jacket. Without a dust jacket, the book is not complete because it was issued with the dust jacket. Now, you also have to be careful because some later editions of dust jackets sometimes are put on 
first edition books trying to fool somebody. Usually the price, if the price is on the dust jacket, you can tell which edition it is by that. Now this one sold for over a thousand bucks. To get that kind of money, it has to be a first edition, first state, first printing with a first edition dust jacket. If not, it's probably not worth much at all. Now here's a well sought after one by Dahl. This is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. This is one of those tough ones because everybody wants one. Even if somebody does grab this one up, most people end up keeping it because they have fond memories of it. So this one doesn't show up for sale itself online much at all these days. Now there are some sets obviously that most any edition out of the set can be worth some money. The original Frank Baum Wizard of Oz series carries a decent value. Most of them will go 50 to 100 bucks in decent condition. Obviously dust jackets and things like that could add to the value depending on the edition that you have. And this is just an example of some of the sorts that will show up from the Wizard of Oz. Now, for a Wizard of Oz book to carry a value, it doesn't necessarily have to be the first edition. Even editions printed in the 50s can carry some value. Foreign printed editions as well are highly sought after. Here's an interesting lot of books. These turn up far more often than most of the other ones. The covers are very much like the original printings as well, so they are collected for the artwork as well as the books themselves. Keep in mind that Baum actually wrote other books, so other ones by him can carry an immense value. Many of these other books by him are worth some money because they're not highly collected and most people aren't even aware that they exist. Now here's Monroe Leaf's The Story of Ferdinand, Ferdinand the Bull. Now this was turned into a Disney animation short, so that's why this is so popular. It's the founding, it's predated Disney's production of the film. Highly collected, the one on the left does have some issues to the dust jacket, but it is original. It doesn't show up very often. It is still produced and still printed to this day. Now here's another interesting one, and this was published by Disney, and this is Lady and the Tramp. It's basically a reprint of the original book which Disney used to produce the film. Now here's an early Disney as well. This is The Adventures of Mickey Mouse, book one. This is a first edition. It's one of the earliest examples of a Disney book from 1931. They're fairly scarce. Most Disney books produced after this time frame were produced in a large enough number that there's still enough of them out there where the value doesn't get to be some horrendous amount of money. Now, some of these books as well were never produced with a dust jacket, so you just have to be aware which ones did or didn't come with a dust jacket. Now, obviously, Dr. Seuss is still extremely well collected. Most of the early first editions with dust jackets will sell for hundreds of dollars. Now, obviously, some single books by Dr. Seuss will sell for some phenomenal money. This is Horton Hatches the Egg. First state, first print with the dust jacket. Excellent, excellent, excellent book to find. Now, one thing that many people get mixed up with vintage kids' books is not knowing which is the first edition, when the book was first published. All of that information can easily be found online with just a simple Chrome search these days. This is Alice in Wonderland's Adventures. This one's from France, and it's from 1869. What you'll run into, though, are multiple editions, all stating to be first edition. Now, a first edition doesn't necessarily mean it's the first publishing of a book. A first edition, in some people's eyes, means it's the first edition that was published by a specific book company. That may not be, again, the first time that book was published. You also see this one from 1899 stating to be a first edition as well. So you have to be very diligent when you're looking for the right edition. Obviously, these are still selling, though, because these still are scarce books. Yet another one from 1907 stating as well, first edition. This is their first edition by this publisher. And here's yet another edition, even later than that, from 1910. But this one has fabulous artwork by someone very well collected. The artist who created the artwork for a book can create the value in it. The book itself may not have been worth that much money had that artist not created the artwork for the book itself. And that is why this one sold for hundreds of dollars. Different editions of books such as ABC books are also highly collected. This is an ABC book from Alice in Wonderland and it sold fairly well. Mother Goose is another area where there are multiple editions, multiple artists, multiple types of books that you can run into. This is just one example by Denslow. It's the artwork in many of these that can garner the value, as I said before. If it's made by someone very well known, 
very well collected. That book can be worth hundreds like this one just because of the artwork itself. Now here's another example of a very well collected series author. This is A.A. A. Milne. Winnie the Pooh, that's the author of Winnie the Pooh, and there are many different ones from the same series. In some cases, the edition was first run, first printed in, say, UK, like this one here. This is tied to Disney, so this one has multiple collectors, but this is far before Disney stepped into the game and started producing animated films and shorts of Winnie the Pooh. And lastly, some of the fairy books and fantasy books are highly collected as well. And of those, the Andrew Lang edited editions are worth some phenomenal money. This is the Blue Fairy Book, which sells for hundreds of dollars. The artwork on the cover of this one is highly collected by Halloween collectors. It has a witch on a broom in a full moon light. Now, Andrew Lang edited multiple books in this series run. This is the Olive Fairy, highly collected and as well will sell for hundreds of dollars. And lastly, here is the Red Fairy, also edited by Andrew Lang. This one has the dust jacket. Now, obviously, the artwork itself is the biggest appeal in something like this. The dust jackets were designed to draw attention to the book, to make you want it, to highlight some key factor in it. So who knows? You may have some of these books sitting in a closet on a bookshelf in the basement in the attic right this very minute and not even know it. These were books that were printed in quantity at one time or another, so there still are plenty of them out there waiting to be discovered right this very minute. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. talking profits. Some guys act like profit is a dirty word. Profits, my friend, are the money we need to grow on. Nobody stands still these days. If everybody else moves ahead and you just stand still, you're actually falling behind. Just to survive, you got to grow and you do it with profits, only with profits.